Way back before a career in running, I was an engineer and fascinated by design and technology. So the inner shoe geek, the child in me, was incredibly excited when Decathlon invited me to come to B Twin Village in Lille, which is where I am right now, to take a look behind the scenes at everything that goes into the production of all of their products, but particularly the research, development, testing, engineering, and design that goes into their running shoes. So let's take a look. So we're not even at the exciting behind the scenes bit yet. We're just in the public area, but already I've seen a hotel. There's bike paths and cycle areas for testing tracks. There's kids test tracks inside. There's people moving around on scooters because this place is just so big that it's completely overwhelming. There's such an incredible place. Obviously there's something quite exciting about being given special behind the scenes access where we're not normally allowed to go. So members of the public can't come behind here and see all of the things that go on in the development of all of the products. So we're in the sport lab, which is actually four different labs looking at really different things. There's 50 people here from eight different countries with 17 PhDs, that's what I've been told, which is an amazing number of people that go into just the research and development, and then ultimately the testing of the products once they're made as well. So I'm in the thermal lab. There's four different climatic chambers. It's actually a little bit overwhelming. So in this one, it can go from minus 40 degrees all the way up to 40 degrees. So that's the full body climatic chamber. Actually around the corner here, there's a much smaller one where they just test feet, not real feet. They use these. So there's little tiny sensors that you can see here that generate the sweat and also measure the temperature to measure the breathability of the shoes. Now there's a huge door, which I'm hoping is much too big for me over here for climatic chamber number four. We're gonna head in there to see what it feels like to run on a treadmill where they test the breathability of apparel and the footwear. And actually I'm wearing a new pair of shoes today which aren't even out yet, so there's a little teaser there. <laughs> the wind, the wind's really taken me by surprise. You can see behind me the massive fans, there's air being blown towards me. And that's because it, in reality, when you're running outside, the air's not still, the air's passing over you. It does feel warm still, so the reality of running outside in a summer's day, I could tell with Electrodes taped all over me, they'd be able to work out how breathable the different fabrics I was wearing were, and the same with the footwear as well. A big part of how a product fits is morphology. And so I met Andre, who also has a PhD from Loughborough University in biomechanics, and he looks at the overall size optimization. How does stuff fit, whether that's shoes or apparel? By studying people all over the world, there's a massive difference from continent to continent. People in China, for example, have a shorter foot on average, but it's more voluminous and it's wider. Whereas people uh, with a longer foot, a larger foot size, proportionally, the shoes get narrower. They modeled lots of different types of foot, kind of an average foot, a rugby player's foot, a trail runner's foot, and a trail runner's foot was leaner, uh, had a higher, more well-defined arch, and that ultimately impacts the way that they make different products for different end uses. This used to be an old tobacco factory, which is pretty cool actually, because Decathlon are all about getting people more active. So obviously the opposite of smoking really. And this map just gives you a sense of the scale of this place. Think about the biggest supermarket that you can imagine. And that's this small section here, which is actually the store part of this setup. And then there's the secret behind the scenes bit, which is what we've been given access to, which is essentially all of this. It's Absolutely gigantic. Okay, so I'm here now in the motion analysis lab, and there's two parts to this. There's the one part that you can see here, which is physical, real life data capture using these fairly complicated looking 3D motion capture devices. But then alongside that, the other part of the motion analysis department is the computational department. There's a whole team of people working on really complex computational models in theory based on any possible design that a shoe designer might want to come up with, looking for the best possible geometry as to how the shoe rolls through and provides extra propulsion, looking at how cushioning will perform in certain situations and modeling the way that the body and the muscles will respond and then they test it in real life. This is the footwear industrial division. This is where the magic happens. This is where the ideas go from being in someone's head to going onto paper to then somehow getting made into the shoes that end up on the shelves for you to run in. The first thing that they do here is to take all of the data from the sports labs from thousands of users, real people, which has been used to create the shape of this, which is the last that ultimately the finished shoe from the running department is gonna get built around. And just to show you how specific these things are, this one's for running, but this one here is a completely different shape. Uh, that's for rock climbing. So the shoes are actually made around this. So the finished shoe should fit perfectly around the finished last for that product. 
The next step is to work on the design brief. So the team will be given a brief based on the needs of runners out there. So the needs of, of you guys, the needs of the consumer. So based on the data that they have and the end goal that they're trying to achieve with a particular product, whether that's speed or stability or comfort or a combination of those things and whether or not they need to use sustainable materials, they work through a checklist of things that they need to achieve and then start working towards how to implement the design in order to achieve those things. So now the designer can quite literally start sketching out the design that they've got in their mind. So they'll start putting pen to paper in order to draw what they think is the best possible response to that brief, using years of their experience in combination with emerging footwear trends to iterate with the project team towards getting a finished design that they've created digitally to then go through the manufacturing process or at least the prototyping process. Now that process has two parallel strands to it. One is the creation of the midsole um, and that's the part of the brief that has to respond to how fast is the shoe, how much energy return should there be, what type of foam is going to be in there, how lightweight does it need to be, is it a racing shoe, is it an entry level running shoe for all possible needs. That determines the type of foam that's going to be used but also the geometry of the foam of the midsole that's going to be the final product and that geometry is determined by the lab team who are looking at those biomechanical analyses. They're able to use thousands of computational models to work out how a particular geometry of foam will behave in a certain use case. So in parallel to that, using the same last, which means that the upper will perfectly fit onto that midsole when it's complete, the team are looking at how they make 2D fabric conform to this fairly complex 3D shape of the last. And to do that, they take the last, draw onto it, and then they will create a two-dimensional pattern from that drawing. That's what you end up with here. So this is just one piece of fabric and then that would be joined together here to give you the, the heel structure and then ultimately overlaid with a whole array of totally different material textile choices to perform different functions like strengthening the areas where the laces are pulling together or supporting the heel cup at the back. During that process of getting to the final product, multiple prototypes are made and they're all made here. These are all the different machines that you can see that are required for making the prototypes of those uppers to get the perfect fit around the last. Every different material and shoe is also put through a whole battery of different tests on machines like the ones in this lab here. So just in front of me here I've got an abrasion machine testing the uppers for their durability. Over here there's an impactor machine which measures about 20 different parameters based on the level of cushioning that a midsole provides. There are different attachments depending on whether it's measuring male or female shoes. And then over here there's a durability of cushioning machine that measures repeated impacts to see how long a uh, different midsole will maintain its level of cushioning for. During the prototyping process, different combinations of upper and midsole are tested subjectively back in the sports labs to find out people's perception of how they feel. Do they make them feel faster or more comfortable before they arrive at the finished product? And then once the product is finalised and it's ready to go into production, whilst the prototypes are produced here in Lille, the final production happens en masse in Asia. Which shoe models that are out now or about to come out have you been working on that you're excited about? Actually the Jogflow 500, it's uh, accessible products for the price but we put a lot of attention on the shape uh, to give the, the, right, the right shape and uh, the right finishing on, on the volume of the shoe so I'm really proud of that. So I don't know whether you're going to be able to answer this but I've heard rumours of a Decathlon super shoe with a carbon plate and a brand new foam and because it's Decathlon I imagine it's not going to be £260 like a, an Alpha Fly. I, I cannot tell you what would be the final price for sure, but uh, it uh, it's, will be a very good value for money, that's for sure. And uh, with a performance of, uh, of a high range, uh, high range shoe uh, for, for about dynamism and, uh, and so on. And the process for creating that shoe is exactly the same process that we've learned about today? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a little bit more, uh, let's say, demanding because uh, we are looking on this shoe uh, uh, a decrease of weight. It's not just a, a normal shoe uh, we put in stores and uh, we challenge a lot of uh, each other uh, to find the best solutions for this shoe and uh, yes, and the result I can hear from Johan Coel uh, directly from him a few days ago is that this shoe is amazing and, uh, and I'm very proud of that. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he ran a 62 minute yeah. uh, half marathon yeah. so yeah, yeah. I think he must be doing something wrong. Yeah, he's still on the target, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's running well, he's on the target and um, uh, it's uh, only the beginning. That's amazing, I know he doesn't run for Team GB but I ran against Johan in my career and um, I'm kind of rooting for him and it'd be really cool to see some decathlon shoes on the start line in the Olympics in 2024. Yeah, 
it could be a, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a dream. The whole process that I've just described from first putting pencil to paper to sketch out a design to then ultimately having a shoe that's available to buy on store shelves is 18 months to two years, which is an incredible amount of time, which means right now the team are working on 2024's shoes. And that process, the amount of expertise that's been accrued over years that's gone into it, all of the people that I've met today throughout that process of creation and, and research has been fascinating to just know how much effort goes into these shoes, particularly from a brand like Decathlon where a lot of the shoes are under £100, some of them are well under £50. To know that this level of research and development goes into each and every product has been fascinating. I've loved it. I'm a shoe geek. I love going behind the scenes. Where would you like us to go behind the scenes next? Let us know in the comments below. If you've got any questions that I didn't answer today, I'll do my best if you do drop a question into the comments to answer you. And I'll see you next time on The Running Channel.